lot of thinking about it, Joe, and I made up my mind. I'm not going to listen to anybody else. From now on, I'm going to see you when I want to see you. What does that mean? It means I'm not going to let Daddy or Peter or Mason tell me I can't talk to you or I can't see you. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it openly. I didn't ever stop hoping, but I nearly did. A little while ago, you asked me if I still think you're guilty. Tell you the truth, I don't know. I'm certainly not as sure as I used to be, though. What made you change? Everything. The way you are. Things you've done since you've been back. kind of man I remember you being before you went away? I don't know. It's a lot of things. Tell me this. Given all the questions that you have in your mind, if you were serving on that jury that tried and convicted me, would there be enough doubt in your mind now that you would vote not guilty? It's a hypothetical question. I don't know, Joe. Okay, look. I have a witness who can exonerate me. I'd like to give him a call and have you meet him. Look, you said you had a witness once before and he never showed up. Was this the same one? Yeah. Yeah, but he'll be there this time. Trust me, Kelly. Joe, I need to talk to you. I'd like to meet at the regular place tonight, 8 o'clock. It's very important. I don't understand what's going on. My witness is a very skittish man who doesn't want to be seen. He says he's a fugitive. A fugitive? What, has he committed a crime? I don't know. He doesn't say much. He doesn't ever tell me anything. I don't understand why he's still seeing you. He keeps wanting to help me, and I believe he can, although it always has to be on his terms. Yeah, but Joe, what if he sees me? Won't he run away again? No, because we're going to hide you. Hide me? Yeah, it'll be okay, close by. I want you to hear what he's got to say. It could make all the difference in the world to us, Kelly. Will you come? Yeah, I'll come. Oh, we don't have to do anything in particular. We could just take a drive somewhere. It's such a beautiful evening. Oh, no. I'm in a mood for something more festive. Oh, festive visit. Yes. <laughs> well, we could just take your plane out of the hangar and take it for a spin around the world. <laughs> I may show you the world someday. Generally speaking, it's not a bad place. <laughs> Santana, I know of a lovely restaurant up in the hills. And we could sit on the terrace and overlook the coast. There's also a dance floor if you feel like that sort of thing. I love that sort of thing. Good. I'll make a reservation. What time? Well, I still have some work to get done. In my office, let's see, I could be ready in, say, an hour or so. That's fine. I am very willing to wait. I'll call first to make sure you're ready before I send the car. Okay. See you later. Oh, and don't look any more beautiful than you do now, or I may not be able to handle it. That's a challenge if I ever heard one. What's that? I ain't that good? <laughs> I never had that. Good. Thank you, sir. Oh, mm -hmm. thanks. thanks you. Okay, so we all know the problem. Right, but we're in sync. The problem is where? Well, what kind of place? Well, any place. we got to find a place where we won't be hassled by teachers. <laughs> that bottoms is driving me crazy. A deserted island would be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> what a dreamer, this one, huh? Hey, I have good dreams. You know, I'd like to sponsor a contest to see who could come up with the worst torture for Mr. Bottom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, he's not that bad. Uh, you wait. Oh, sounds like a crummy school you're going to. Hey, i got an idea. You want for Mr. Bottom? No, 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 no. Remember that motel we were in together? Oh, well, yes. <laughs> what? Well, what about it? You think it would work? Oh, where kids would go in. What are you guys talking about? Well, I was just reminding Lakin of a place we went to once. It's a, uh, or at least it was a motel. Oh, oh a no. motel, right on target. <laughs> oh, no, 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 wait. It's really old and crumbly. Oh. Built, I mean, but 
Oh, shoot, it wouldn't work. It's going to close for a while. Perfect! An old, beat-up motel that's closed? It's probably condemned. No, 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 no. Will you wait a minute? Oh, I don't know. Will I wait a minute? No, this place is closed. <laughs> But it seems to me that I remember a sign that said it was for sale or lease. Come That's on, right. Kate. Is it motel? Are you serious? Well, let's at least check it out, huh? What have we got to lose? You want to? Well, let's... well why not? Yeah. Oh, well, let's let Jade decide. She's an expert on motels ever since her Hollywood days. Uh, ah, thanks a lot, Dan. I was just joking. Well, it wasn't very funny. It's just some things you don't joke about, okay? I'm sorry. Mad at me? Of course I'm mad at you. Good. I think you two have made up. Who's going to go check this place out, huh? Uh, all right, terrific. Uh, Danny, I'll get the check for you. No, no, no. Allow me to get the check for you. <laughs> I wouldn't dream of it. No, no, I wouldn't dream of taking that pleasure away from you. Since you insist upon it, let me get it for you. I'll get the next no, one. No, 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 no. I don't want the check. Oh. Uh, I know what you mean. I don't either. Will you two stop? It's like being with the two stooges. I know. Uh, he's Come a stooge. <clears throat> I'm a leading man. Well, how come you're always leading with your chin? Just sit oh. down, you guys. <laughs> Just finish looking over the contract and make sure that all the points are covered, okay? <laughs> Call me tomorrow afternoon and I'll have it for you. All right. Thank you, Bill. Oh. Mason. <laughs> Mason, hello. Uh, hello. It's yeah. been a while. Yes, it has. Good night, Santana. Good night, Bill. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. See you, Bill. Come on in. Bill Larwin? Yeah. He's a good friend of mine. Santana, if you need an attorney, why didn't you come to me for a uh, recommendation? Well, I didn't want to impose on you, that's all. Well, it wouldn't have been an imposition. I'd like to be able to help you. <laughs> well, thank you. I'd like to be able to mix you a drink. What would you like? Same old thing. Scotch? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, we, we've been friends for a lot of years, Santana. I hate to think of you going to strangers for help. Well, we're not all that close, Mason. Oh, how quickly they forget. Don't you remember that time... Years ago, we were waiting in our fish pond, and you told me you wanted to marry me more than anything else in the entire world. Mason, I did not. Are you denying that you made overtures to me? I certainly do. I remember very clearly you were the one that asked me to marry you. <laughs> and you threw me in the pond. Threw you? <laughs> certainly not. Yes, you did. But I'm glad you did, because it was so hard. Hey, you didn't come over here to reminisce, did you? Well, why not? It's fun. I suspect that you have something more on your mind. You know, you've been acting very strange lately. Have I? Mm-hmm. Are you still worried about your father's birthday party? <laughs> well, I'm not overly optimistic about it, but it isn't taking over my life. Good. I hope not. I made a few um, foolish remarks, and somehow they got recorded without my knowledge. Worse than foolish, actually. My uh, father would think of them as seditious. Cece loves you very much. <clears throat> One thing I did not come here to talk about was Cece Capwell. Sorry. I just wanted to make you feel better. Excuse me. Let's talk about why telephones were ever invented. Hello? Hello? No, I haven't, I'm afraid. Uh, about a half an hour or so? Okay, thanks, I appreciate it. Okay, bye. <clears throat> don't tell me that you have another date. I have, and don't ask me with who, because I'm not going to tell you. I wouldn't dream of it. <laughs> well, you've been known to do that in the past. I wasn't aware of the fact that you'd reformed. Finish your drink. Thanks. Santana, what are your um, ambitions? I mean, I mean, ultimately, do you want to be the most famous decorator in the entire world? No. What then? Do you want to get married and have a family and bake little cookies for the kids? Yes, I do. And I want a career. You are aware that you have the opportunity to choose from any number of men for your husband. Some of them can make life better than the others. You're right. About a number of things. I'll buy that. What I'm trying to say is that I think I could help you realize your goals. I mean, better than most men could. 
All I need is a chance and some encouragement. Mason, don't you think that uh, you're letting nostalgia take over and color your thinking? No, I don't think so. I thought the world of you when we were kids, and I still feel the same way now. More mature fashion, of course. I'm flattered, thank you. Well, you don't have to thank me, because I don't seem to have much control over it. Can't really take credit for it. Am I being foolish? No. It's sweet, and I appreciate it. Appreciation, that's a chilly kind of emotion. Not for me, it isn't. For me, it's very warm and real. Is it, Santana? Well, I better not let time slip away from me. Santana, I, uh, I'd sort of like to finish now that I've started. I'm kind of on a roll. Would you hear me out? Thanks. You were in here earlier, weren't you? Yeah, it's a good place to hang out. Good food, good prices, waiters that aren't nosy. <laughs> well, you're in a good mood today. Yeah, this is one fantastic day. I'm ready to take on the world. Great, lots of luck. Thanks a lot. For a long time, Santana, I felt that you were the most extraordinary woman I know. <laughs> no, no, I've watched you, I've thought about it, and I've hoped that one day you and I might possibly... Well, Mason, I can't take you so seriously when you're so sincere. Why not? Because it's not like you. And besides, I feel like you're making fun of me in earnest. Well, I'm not. It's uh, just that I don't show this side of myself very often. Please, don't say any more. I don't want to hear it. Are you afraid? Afraid of what? Your feelings. Anything else. I just don't want to hear any more, that's all. I'm not trying to come on too strongly, Santana. I just felt I needed to say it. Certainly not asking anything of you. Good. I was just starting to get a little worried that uh, you were getting a little bit possessive and I was starting to feel suffocated. Well, it was never intentional. I, I guess I went a little crazy a few years ago when you said that I wasn't half the man my brother was. That made me pretty angry. I'm sorry. I didn't have the right to say that. I'd rather you thought you were wrong about it, not just wrong in saying it. Anyway, it was a uh, long time ago, and I shouldn't be dragging it up. Wrong or not, I still think about it. Santana, I honestly don't know if my feelings about you are a blessing or a curse. I've never led you on, have I? You lead me on just being here. Mason, I still have some work to get done at the office. I really do have to go. Yes, and then you have that mysterious date. It isn't mysterious to me. Try to understand. And thank you for what you said. I'll never forget. The immortal words of Mason Capwell. Well, as the walrus said, I, the time has come, I suppose... One day, I hope you'll be going out with me. Thanks for the drink. <laughs> You're welcome, Mason. Goodbye. Goodbye. How easily she says that word. Oh, 
I've had plenty of years of practice. Maybe too many. Ciao. Bye. Thank you. Would you care for a margarita? Sure. Make mine without salt, please. Thank you. It's been a long time since we had dinner together. Yes, it has. A long time. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, there was something about you that suggested that you become an excellent dinner companion. As the sea captain said, I like the cut of your jib. Well, you should. You were the one who cut it. Well, I'm glad you decided to learn the business, Warren. There's something comforting to a man to know that his son's going to carry on. Well, I doubt I'll be able to carry on the way you have. Well, my talent for dissipation is God-given. I would hope that you would have higher aspirations. What, something like the lines of uh, real estate and investments? I think in time you'll learn to like it more than suntan oil and CPR. Yeah, well, I'd be doing as much for mankind. Including womankind? Well, generally, it's women that I pull out of the drink, yes. Oh, yeah, and some of them fake it to get your attention? <laughs> well, on one or two occasions, that has occurred to me. Well, anyway, you figure it. I think that you will get a lot out of learning the business and investments, do yourself good, and the family. Well, it shouldn't take long to find out if I've got what it takes. I wouldn't worry about that. There is something that I'm worried about, however. I have to tell you, because it affects you. Oh, what is it? Thank you. I am ashamed. I'm sad to tell you that the beachfront property that we owned has been lost to a technicality, a legal technicality. We lost it? You mean all 50 acres? You knew it was gone. Well, I mean, I heard Mom worrying about it. Oh, well, that's just great. That's just great. Well, does Grandma know? No. Well, Mix doesn't know. I don't know. She's going to raise the roof when she finds out, but I... I, I have to tell her sometime. I don't know Dad, I don't mean to be critical, but how in the sand hell could you let that happen? There was no way I could prevent it. Sometimes you lose, like it or not. L.L. sure could stand for Lionel Lockridge. Capwell and Lockridge? No. Said you wanted to see me. Yes, I did. What's up? Here, sit down for a minute. Uh oh. Gonna be one of those talks again. Kelly, I am very disturbed to think that you have serious doubts about Joe Perkins' responsibility in Channing's death. I really don't want to talk about this. The decision was unanimous. Now that means that every man and woman on that jury heard the facts of the case and believed that he was responsible for his death. I know that. Then how has Joe managed to sway you? You can't allow your good sense to be clouded this way. I don't think that's what's happened. If anything, I'm seeing things more clearly than I ever did. How? In what way? From the beginning, even before the trial started, this whole family thought Joe was guilty. We had all our minds made up. We wouldn't even consider the idea that he might have been innocent. Well, Daddy, I'm starting to think that way. Oh, you can't, and you mustn't. I am, though. Seeing Joe again has made me remember what kind of man he is and how well we knew each other. Up until Channing's death, I'd never dreamed Joe would be capable of hurting someone. He was never a violent person. Even that fight he got into the night before Channing was killed. Channing started that fight. Joe did everything in his power to avoid it. Kelly, I don't want to listen to this anymore. It sickens me to hear you defending him. Why can't you at least consider the possibility that he may be innocent? Innocent? How can you even suggest it? Have you lost touch with reality? 
Have you forgotten what a wonderful and vital human being your brother was? No, I haven't forgotten. Then because... stop it. I won't have you talking like this, and I don't want to listen to it anymore. Why is your mind so closed? What if he were innocent? But he's not innocent. And there's no way in this whole world that he could be innocent. Is your memory so short? And your loyalty so fragile? Hello. Yes, Gina. Are you all right? She's right here. It's for you. Hello? I'm glad I found you at home. Hi, Gina. I, now, I apologize for the last-minute invitation, but can you join Brandon and me for dinner tonight? Uh, no, I'm not going to be able to make it tonight. Can we make here, it for let, some other let time? let me speak to him. Hang on a second. Daddy wants to talk to you. I'm going, Daddy. All right. Gina, where are you? Santa Barbara. I came up with Brandon. Oh, we're staying at your hotel. At the hotel? Well, how long will you be in town? Oh, I haven't decided yet. I needed a change of scenery. Uh, what, what, what better place is there to get away to, huh? Well, what room number are you in? Uh, 308. Actually, it was Kelly's idea we come to Santa Barbara. Cece, are, are you upset about something? No, no, I'm not upset. I'm just concerned about you. I know it's been difficult for you. Well, uh, I'm coming along. Uh, Gina, I'm going to have you and Brandon moved up to the presidential suite. It'll be more comfortable for you. Well, now that is very kind of you. Not necessary, but kind. No, I, I want to do it. How is Brandon? He's fine. Loves the beaches here. Well, I'm anxious to see you both. And we'd love to see you. I'll get back to you. Fine. Peter, this is Cece. Oh, hello, Cece. I just had a call from Mrs. Gina DeMott. She's visiting our hotel and she's in room 308. Now, I would like her to be moved into the presidential suite. All right, fine, no problem. She has a young son with her, and I want you to buy him a gift and put my name on the card. Oh, be sure that there aren't any breakable things on the table. And Peter, I would appreciate it if you check out the suite personally. Of course, Cece, I'll be glad to. Uh, personal friends of yours? Uh, yes, her husband was, and he just passed away. I want to be sure she's comfortable. Oh, and Peter, I want to talk to you about Kelly and Joe Perkins. Yeah, I, um, uh, I really need help with that, Cece. Well, we're going to have to do something. I was hoping you and Mason would handle it, but now it looks like I'm going to have to get into this. But I think we've talked long enough. Uh, Veronica, I've got to get up to the presidential suite right away. Oh, well, I was just going to tell you that Santana Andrade is outside waiting to see you. It was so random, I've only got a minute. Okay. Miss Andrade? Okay. Oh, uh, Veronica, would you make sure that the DeMotts are moved up to the presidential suite as soon as possible? They're personal friends of the Capwells, and I want to treat them with velvet gloves. Have uh, champagne and flowers sent up there in the next 15 minutes, okay? All right. Hello, Santana. Hi, Peter. Am I catching you at a bad time? Well, I'm on my way to the hotel. I, I can't talk about the decorating right now. Okay. I just want to talk to you about the uh, ideas I have for the hotel quarters. Well, then you'll have to come along, then. Okay. Fine. Okay. Let's go. All right. <laughs> Miss Andrade, please. This is C.C. Capwell calling. I'm sorry. Miss Andrade isn't here, Mr. Capwell. May I take a message? Well, do you know where she can be reached? Yes. I just got word she's gone to the Capwell Hotel. She has? Uh, do you know why? I don't know. She had Mr. Flint's secretary call me a minute ago to say she'd be in the presidential suite of the hotel with Mr. Flint. May I have her call you later? And uh, No. I'll call back. Uh. 
What? I, I love, I sue, I seek a wife. A woman that is like a German clock. Mumbling to yourself again, Mason. Yeah, I do that sometimes. Mm, I hope it isn't catching. No, don't need to be alarmed. Isn't catching. I'll tell you something that may be catching in this family. What? Everybody in this family falls in love with the wrong person. Over and over again, time and time again, I swear it must be an inherited weakness. Look at you, for example, classic case. Mm -mm, leave me out of this. Oh, uh, no, 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 you're practically the star of this theory. Look at the trouble it caused when you fell in love with Joe Perkins. You're still feeling the repercussions from it. Now, Ted is running around with a Lockridge girl, a remarkably stupid thing to do. Who knows what our sister Eden is up to these days? Well, maybe she'll never fall in love with anybody, Mason. Would that please you? Sometimes I think Dad is the only smart one in the family. Maybe if the problem is caused by a recessive gene, it skipped him. Why? Because he's alone? Is that such an enviable state? No, because when your mother, Sophia, died, he never allowed himself to fall in love, remarry again. What's it been now? Fifteen years, right? It's not because he decided not to. It's because he never got over her. He loved her that much. Well, that's true. There are some people that can't be forgotten. But you had better get over Joe. If not... What? I think you're going to be in for a lot more problems. Maybe violence, Kelly. Oh, you see into the future, Mason? No, but I have a premonition about this. A very strong one. Kelly, please don't start back up with Joe again. I thought I made it clear to you that I'm not going to listen to anyone about the subject of Joe and me again. Kelly, you have to listen to me. I'm talking to you from the bottom of my heart. If you go back to Joe, it'll be a disaster, not just for you, but for the entire family. Mm. Thanks for those warm words and good wishes, Mason. Kelly, where are you going? I'm going to see Joe. And this is the last time that I'm ever going to tell you where I'm going or who I'm going to see. It hasn't been uh, managed very successfully, as you can see from the look of it. But um, I think with a little TLC, it could be turned into a money-making proposition again. Uh, yeah. However, legally, I'm required to lease the motel to an adult. Well, I assume you feel money is money, whatever age of the person giving it to you. <laughs> of course, uh, as long as the person signing the contract is over 18. It's a great spot, though, Ted. Yeah, it's not bad. I'm glad you knew about it. Hey, what do you think? I think it's interesting. It's a little run down, but with a little paint, we can fix it up. It'll no. be great. I like it just the way it is. Do you um, think the lease is negotiable? <laughs> Well, we'd have to talk to the owner about that, but I'm sure something could be worked out. It usually right. can. Well, the place is just sitting here empty. I'm sure you'd be glad to have some kind of income from it. Well, can you arrange for us to talk to him? I'd be happy to. All right, good, because I think this place would work out just fine. I'm excited about it. But don't tell the owner, because he might up the price. Right. This place could be fantastic. Well, it's unanimous, then. Jade, what do you think? Yeah, let's do it. All right. <laughs> It's a creepy place. Never thought of it. Are we early? Yeah. I wanted to get here first so we could hide you. Hide me where? I don't know. What about right here? You'll be able to hear everything. What if he finds out I'm here? Trust me. What time is it? A little before eight. Joe, I don't think he's coming. It better. Maybe he suspected you were setting a trap. Trust me, Kelly. He didn't suspect anything. You'll be here. I want to go, Joe. Why? I don't think he's coming. I don't even think he exists. We've talked about this witness before, but he never seems to show up. He'll be here, Kelly. I wouldn't drag you down here for nothing. What, what good would that do? What did I prove if I did that? Joe! Over here, Dominic. Peter, what I think we should do along the hall, we should have recent sliding. And I think what we should use 
our small spots to create a more effective ambience. Peter, am I talking to myself? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, Santana. I just got a lot on my mind today. You said I could have five minutes of your time, and then you haven't listened to what I said. Uh, then let's go, Santana. Cece. Peter, hi, Cece. Listen, if you came up about the suite, I've checked everything out. I took all the breakable objects off the table. No, that, that's fine. Santana, I have to talk to you about the hotel project. Why don't we go downstairs to the office? All right, fine. I was just discussing the lighting with Peter. Well, uh, that can wait. You can see him later. <laughs> He's not out to lunch. <laughs> I think I'll be back by then. Personal jokes, you see. Santana. <laughs> okay, let me just get my things. Where are we going? We're going to the top floor, darling. Uncle C.C. thinks we should stay in the presidential suite. That was very nice of him to do that. Well, Mr. Capwell always reserves it for his special friends. Why are we going to move? You're going to like it much better up there, Brandon. There's a beautiful view of the ocean, and during the day you can see all of the sailboats out there. Sailboats? Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. If there's anything we can do for you, you just let us know. Thank you for all your help. Peter, I really do need some answers on those specs. If we don't finish them tonight, we're going to have to get to a first thing tomorrow morning. Well, in that case, Peter, why don't you come downstairs with us? I, uh, I thought you wanted to talk to Santana alone. Well, it's all right. You get whatever business you two have out of the way, and then Santana and I can take a time. Oh, uh, why don't we take the private elevator instead? This Susie. elevator's here, but there's no yeah, point in wasting time. Tonight? No, not, no, not tonight. You're not sure. Let's hide out. Uncle Cece! Well, it's so nice to see you. Where can you see sailboats? Yeah. Mommy, it's Uncle Cece. Hello, Gina. Cece, you didn't need to be here. No, I wanted to make sure you two got tucked in comfortably. Gina, this is Santana Andrade, our hotel decorator. And this is Peter Flint. He's the manager of our hotels. Hi. Mm, nice to meet you. This Hello. is Mrs. DeMott and his son, Brandon. Hi, Brandon. How do you do, Brandon? <laughs> I don't know if you realize it, but that was quite an honor. You see, Brandon here doesn't shake hands with people the way he should. <laughs> I'm flattered. See, see, I don't know how to thank you enough for all the arrangements, the trouble you, you went to. Oh, there's no trouble at all. I just hope you enjoy your rooms. In fact, I'm going to have Peter here show them to you, because Santana and I have some business to take care of. But, but I will call you later. Fine. It was nice meeting both of you. I'll make sure they're comfortable and I'll be down later, Cece. Fine, thanks. Good night. Good night. Oh, we dropped his car. Brandon, here's your bear. I lost it. Almost. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, Brandon. Why'd you call me down here? I wanted to talk to you. I thought maybe if we went over everything we know, we may be able to make some kind of sense out of it all. I keep thinking about the night of Channing's murder, going over it, trying to figure out who it was that did it. Those trying to figure out. If I had anything new to add, I would have called you. I know that, but, but I need to go over it again. I'm trying to figure out if there's some kind of connection between the night of Channing's murder and that motel in, in the desert where Sylvia Capwell was held captive. We're covering all ground. I told you I don't think there's any connection between the two events. It's totally irrelevant in terms of Channing's murder. The fact that Channing had the ashtray... Look, he didn't just have it, he kept it hidden. If it was so unimportant, why, why did he hide it? As you learned from his diary, he was trying to piece together his own puzzle. Maybe he thought the ashtray was important, I can't see it. Okay, let's go back to the night of Channing's murder. You were in the corridor outside the study. Is that right? Joe, do we have to go over it again? Now, just bear with me. You were there, right? Yes, I already told you I was. Okay. You were in that corridor outside the study, and you heard something. Uh, a gunshot, perhaps, but you weren't quite sure. And, and then what happened after that? 
and then you came along and we both went to the study and saw Channing lying on the floor. Right. We went into the study together. And, and then you disappeared, right? Do you have a tape recorder going? What's this all about? Yes or no? I want to know what's going on. I don't like this. I'm not going to say another word. Something's wrong. I have a good reason for these questions. All you have to do is answer them. Well, then give me your reason, because if you don't, I'm leaving. You double-cross me, Joe! And Dominic, wait! I wanted Kelly to meet you and hear you so that she would believe everything I've been trying to tell her. She won't hurt you, Dominic. There's nothing to worry about with Kelly. Who are you? What do you know about Channing's death? How did you get involved in all of this? Well, I thought I recognized you. They used to have mariachi players here. Now they have strolling margarita drinkers. Huh? Thank you. I believe I will sit down. What do you want? Well, it's just a technicality, Lionel, but um, the deed to the beachfront property hasn't been delivered to me or the Kuzoni Foundation. Speak to my attorney. Well, I tried that. It's not easy. First, he hadn't come in. Then he had come in, but he had gone back out to lunch. I finally caught him between ambulance chases. Like his client, he knew nothing of the deed, that is. It seems that you were supposed to send the deed to him so that he could forward it on to me. He must have slipped my mind. I'll check on it. Mm-hmm. I think that I should uh, warn you, Lionel, since I know you're not conversant with the law, that if you try to get away with delaying tactics... You can be hauled into court. And let me assure you that if you can be, you will be. Hmm. Should I tell you something about yourself, Mason? By no means. You are a lonely, driven, sad young man who's lived all his life in the shadow of his father. Now, C.C. Capital does cast a big shadow. A big, dark iceberg of a shadow. Well, in that case, let me volunteer that I consider you a wasted, dissipated, useless drone. A blight on society and his own family. Mm. You're an intellectual poseur and a professional joke. Shall I go on? I can. Huh. Some people would consider it not strategically wise to offend a man who has something on them, as I do on you. I assume that you're referring to the tape recording. I'm looking forward to playing it for CC. It should cause a great deal of dissension. Go right ahead. A useless gesture. Won't get you your property back, will it? It'll give me a great deal of personal satisfaction. Now you're being childish, Lionel. You were outsmarted in the property auction, so you're trying to retaliate. Just goes to show how petty you really are. On the contrary, I'm being honorable. I promised you that I would play that tape for C.C. Capwell's birthday if you outbid me. I'm simply keeping my promise. I'll promise you something else, though. Someday, you will come asking me for help. Very doubtful. Oh, no. You will. Correction, you'll come begging me for help. Begging me not to destroy you. Mark my words, Mason. It's just a matter of time. Dominic was the one who helped me get into your house all those times. How? He knew about the security system. He also got me a key to Channing's room. I don't understand. How? Why are you trying to help him? Because I know Joe is innocent. He didn't kill your brother. How do you know? Because I was there the night that Channing was killed. We found the body together. You heard that? Why didn't you come forward earlier at the trial? I couldn't. Don't ask. Why were you at the party that night? I wanted to meet your father so I could ask him for a job. What kind of job? I fly airplanes and I wanted to work for the Capwells. I've been trying to help Joe. Because I owe him so much, because I didn't come forward to try to help clear his name. What kept you from coming forward? All I can tell you is I've been a fugitive. I had to hide out. Who are you? I go by the name of Dominic. If I'm ever going to believe you and not think this is something you and Joe dreamed up, I've got to have complete honesty. You can tell her, Dominic. You can trust her. You can. 
I swear I'll never tell anybody what you say. But I've got to have the truth. Otherwise, I can't believe you and I can't believe Joe. I'm sorry, eh? I had to cancel dinner, CC. I just wasn't up to it. That's all right. We can always have dinner. I'm more concerned about you right now. You seem uh, different since we left the hotel. I don't know what it is. I'm just in a mood. Uh, forget it. You know, your friends were very nice. Especially that little boy. He was so special. Sweet. What was his name? Brandon. And you're right. He is very special. Mm. I guess it's because he's the same age as my own son. But I shouldn't bring that up. Forgive me. There's nothing to forgive. I can certainly understand how you feel. Well, I'm glad you're here. You're very patient with me. I'm glad I'm here, too. Can I fix you a drink? Uh, later. Santana. Oh, man. 